Welcome to Pals. It's Prof. Sanya Wu's Anatomy Lecture Series. In this place, our goal is to make anatomy simple. If you're just joining us or you have not subscribed, we would like you to please do it now and be part of this amazing anatomy family. This is a lecture series on the embryology of the heart. The lecture is divided into five parts. Part one is on the formation of the primary heart tube. Part two is on the development of the atrium or atrial chambers. Part three, which you are watching now, is on the development of the ventricles and the outflow tract. We have part four, which is on the clinical correlates of heart embryology. And in part five, we will test our knowledge of what we have learned in all the parts through our question and answer section, where we will answer related questions from various examination boards. So let's go to class. The bubbles caudis and primitive ventricle are the two parts that will give rise to the ventricle. So we'll start with the development. The bubbles caudis at first lies to the right side of the primitive common ventricle with a deep sulcus between them. This sulcus gets narrow and will eventually get obliterated, as you can notice here. The bubble's caudis now moves to the left to lie in front of the common ventricle here. The proximal part of the bubble's caudis becomes absorbed inside the primitive ventricle to form the common bulbo ventricular chamber here. Let's look at the fate of the bubble's caudis. Its proximal part here will form the trabecular part of the right ventricular chamber. The middle portion of the bubble's caudis here forms the smooth outflow tract of the right and left ventricles. That is the conus arteriosus or infundibulum in the right ventricle and the aortic vestibule of the left ventricle. This is a fully developed heart. This is the standocostal surface of a heart. And here is the conus arteriosus or the infundibulum of the right ventricle. Let's open the right ventricular chamber and take a look. This is a rough or trabeculate part of the right ventricle from the proximal bubble scodis. And here is the smooth outflow tract or infundibulum from the middle portion of the bubble scodis. We will consider formation of interventricular septum. This process starts by the end of the fourth week and will get completed by the end of the seventh week with the closure of the interventricular foramen. The interventricular septum is made up of three parts, the muscular part, the bulbar part, and the membranous part. These three parts develop from three different sources. The muscular part develops from the floor of the ventricle. This process starts with upward growth of a muscular ridge from the floor of primitive ventricle that is near its apex at this point. It will grow up to the level of the septum intermedius. It forms the muscular part of the interventricular septum. The second part, the bulbar part, will develop from right and left bulbar ridges. From the conical part of common ventricular chamber here, two ridges, that's the right and the left bulbar ridges, will develop in the distal part of the bulbous caudis. They will grow and approach each other and fuse together to form the bulbar part of the interventricular septum. There is a gap between the upper margin of the muscular septum and the lower margin of the bulbar septum. This gap is called the interventricular foramen. Membranous part is the intermediate part and it is the part between the bulbar part and the muscular part. This part will be formed by contributions from these two earlier mentioned portions which are from the right AV cushions and from right and left bulbar ridges. This part closes the interventricular foramen of the interventricular septum and will mark the complete formation of interventricular septum. Cavitation of the ventricular walls 
will give rise to formation of the trabecular canal, papillary muscles, and the coda tendine. We will consider the formation of eticopulmonary septum next. This septum develops during the fifth week of intrauterine life. It is a spiral septum that divides the truncus arteriosus into two vessels, the aorta and pulmonary trunk. It develops from right and left truncal ridges. The truncal ridges develop due to proliferation of mesenchymal cells which are derived from neural crest cells that migrate in the walls of truncus arteriosus near the conus. The truncal ridges grow and fuse with each other to form the spiral septum close to the conical part of the ventricle. Because the pulmonary trunk and aorta are separated from each other by a septum that is spiral, the relationship of the pulmonary trunk and aorta with each other will differ in the lower, middle, and upper parts. In the lower part, the spiral septum here is in the coronal plane. As a result, the pulmonary trunk is in front and the ascending aorta is posterior. In the middle part, the spiral septum is in the sagittal plane so that pulmonary trunk and ascending aorta are situated side by side with the aorta being on the right and pulmonary trunk on the left. In the upper part, the spiral septum is again in the coronal plane but here the aorta lies anteriorly and pulmonary trunk lies posteriorly. We will consider development of the valves of the heart next. Valvulogenesis is the process of development of valves. This process is initiated by 1. Swellings of cardiac jelly to form endocardial cushions followed by 2. Inward migration of endocardial cells. We will start with the tricuspid valve. The right atrioventricular valve is the tricuspid valve. It begins to form between the 5th and run to the 8th week of intrauterine life. It is present between the right atrium and right ventricle and it guards the right AV canal. Three swellings, anterior, posterior and septal swellings will appear in the AV canal. These swellings are formed by one subendocardial mesenchyme cells called the endocardial cushion cells and two cells from the epicardium. This is one of the swellings of the cusp. Within are the endocardial cushion cells and here are cells from the epicardium. Here are the epicardium derived cells in the developing leaflet. The swellings will enlarge and meet each other in the lumen. The free margins of these swellings do not fuse with each other. The ventricular surface of these swellings is hollowed and cusps are formed. There are three cusps, the anterior, posterior and septal and is the reason the name tricuspid valve. The free margins are connected to papillary muscles by the thin coda tendine. The septal cusps usually develop during the third month. We will next consider the left atrioventricular valve, which is the mitral valve. They are located between the left atrium and the left ventricle and they guard the left AV canal. Unlike the right atrioventricular valve, it has two valves and is therefore called the bicuspid valve. The processes are still the same with what we've already discussed in the tricuspid valve. Pulmonary and aortic valves. These valves also develop in the fifth week from endocardial cushions at the junction of bulbus cordis and truncus arteriosus. Two endocardial cushions develop in the right and left walls, as we can note here. Simultaneously, two more cushions, anterior and posterior, 
will also develop. The truncus arteriosus now will have four cushions, the anterior and posterior, and the right and left. With the separation of aortic and pulmonary openings through formation of the aortic pulmonary septum, the right and left cushions will be divided into two parts here. One part will go to aortic opening and the other part will go to the pulmonary opening. Now, each opening will have three cushions from which the three cusps of each of the vessels will develop. The pulmonary opening is first ventral to the aortic opening. The heart undergoes partial rotation to the left and as a result, the pulmonary opening comes to lie anterior and to the left of the aortic opening and cusps acquire their definitive relationship. That is, pulmonary trunk will have one posterior and two anterior cusps and aorta will have one anterior and two posterior cusps. The conducting system of the heart is made up of four components. The SA node, AV node, bundle of his and Purkinje fibers. We'll consider their formation. The sinoatrial node develops during the fifth week. Initially, it is located in the right wall of the sinus venosus, but it will later lie near the opening of the superior vena cava in the right atrium. The atrioventricular node and AV bundle of his, which are derived from cells in the left wall of the sinus venosus and AV canal, will be located in the base of interatrial septum, just anterior to the opening of the coronary sinus. Purkinje fibers are the fibers that will be arising from the AV bundle. Their branches will be distributed throughout the ventricular myocardium and are termed the Purkinje fibers. This is where we will end this part of the lecture. If you have questions, comments or suggestions, please throw them in the comment section. And if you like the video, press the like button and share it to your friends. And together, we will build a unique anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. See you in my next video. Thank you and bye for now.